Hello everyone and welcome to Raven's World and welcome to my Forbidden Cults preview and review because I personally don't think much will change anymore in the game. I've now been playing this expansion for about 20 hours and I wanted to show you what is new in the expansion and what I think of it. So uh, let's get started. The first thing to know is that the expansion is very much aimed at, if you didn't guess it from the artwork yet, and here on the background my video, it's aimed at kind of like a Cthulhu-esque horror-ish theme. So there's lots of tentacles involved and lots of blood and gore, which is a big departure from the previous expansion, which was all about steampunk, and the expansion before that, which was all about demons. So one nice thing about Tales of Majijal, for me at least, is the way that you unlock new things and you kind of learn about the world and things like that and I don't want to spoil those things for you so what I did is I kind of took a look at the Steam store page and see what has been spoiled by the developer himself so that I can feel free to talk about those things but I specifically don't go into detail on how to unlock things because those things are so much more fun to find out for yourself and if you really want to know how to I'm sure there will be a guide to it at some point. First of all, the game has a lot of new equipment as well as new achievements. So currently my Steam says that it has 1746 achievements. So there is a lot to do for you people that like achievements. Then there is also some new equipment. So I've saved a couple of things that I just wanted to show. But of course there's so much new stuff and I, I don't even know what belongs to which expansion anymore. But two of them uh, which stood out to me that I saved here. Uh, the first one is called the Writhing Wing Ring of the Hunter. And this is a very interesting ring because first of all it reduces your physical spell and mental save by minus 30 which is a lot but then it allows you to get a third prodigy. So normally you can only get two prodigies in the game which are normally very very strong things so now you can actually get a third prodigy for that very special build you always wanted to do. However it does have a trade-off and you have to deliver some physical spell and mental save in return. Then there is uh, the Spinal Cage here, which is kind of a cool armor, which at least early game is quite nice, because it has this activate talent called Bone Grab, where basically if you're always having trouble getting in range of casters or archers or something like that, you can just grab them and then you bring them towards you while also doing some damage over turns and also some direct damage. So this was really quite a nice thing. Throughout the game you will also be finding a lot of different codes in different locations and once you find the occult egress you can enter these codes and something will happen. I won't spoil what will happen because there's multiple things that can happen and I'm sure I haven't seen all of them yet. Let me just say that there's one very important code that will actually unlock something for you so they're definitely worth keeping an eye out for. Throughout the game you will also be picking up some tomes and I'm not sure how many there are. I think I found three in total. You can see two of them here and you can read them and then different things can happen. One of them is very important for unlocking things but this one here for example is warning me that it's going to be very dangerous and I would suggest listening to this warning. Only go there if you're very sure of your build because it's going to be quite difficult. As you can see here it transports you into this cool book-like realm and also the portals here are actually book chapters that you traverse and in the end uh, I also saw on the Steam page that it's already spoiled there so I am free to talk about it you can meet someone called the one that writes and all I can say is be prepared for this fight it's not an easy fight at all in the end I managed to beat him but it will be a hard one so yeah before you read the difficult books be sure that you know what you're doing Another new thing in this game is these tentacles that are standing around. Just like these statues in Ashes of Yurok, you have these tentacles here that you can touch and something can happen. I'm not sure if I've seen everything that can happen, but one of the things that are cool is you can get transported inside the tentacle and then you have to fight monsters while a lot of gastric waves from the inside of this tentacle are also attacking you. So this is kind of a fun area and basically it allows you to attack some more monsters, get some more experience and loot and making your character stronger. As mentioned on the Steam page, there's also a new area called the Scourged Pits, which looks like this. And it's uh, basically in the eastern part of the first continent. Uh, and, uh, well, you can go there and kill more monsters in this whole tentacly environment. There's, of course, many more new areas in the game. Two of them that I want to kind of mention are the Maggot and the God Feaster, which are fairly similar to each other. Basically, you're inside a huge worm and you have to track to its brain in order to destroy the brain so you can go out. And this is really kind of a cool area. It's fairly difficult, I thought, but it was lots of fun to kind of see these new areas. I kind of like these pre-made areas that have a 
clear purpose to them. For example, the same thing in the second continent where you have to run in this volcano. I just kind of like these levels where you have this clear purpose instead of just walking around and killing monsters. So I really enjoyed this area. The game also has two new races as well as two new classes. Let's first go over which they are and then we can go into a bit more detail. So first we have the Drem, which are under Dwarf. Then we have the Giants, which are the Krogs, which are anti-magic. Then we have two Demented classes, one of which is the Writhing one and one of which is the Cultist of Entropy. Now you start off with the Writhing one, but you won't have unlocked the Cultist nor the two races yet. I've unlocked the Cultist and the Drem by myself, but I haven't found out yet how to unlock the Krog. But because I wanted to show it, I've downloaded a mod from the Steam Workshop, which unlocks all uh, the classes and races so that I can show you what it did. So I have no clue yet how to unlock this one. So here I've made a Drem writhing one so you can kind of see how it looks and what it does. This is also in one of the new areas of the game called Crushcore, the hidden sanctuary. So if we press C here, you can see what a writhing one is. This one here is a Drem with his lovely face there and a writhing one sacrifices one of his arms to turn it into a tentacle. So you will always have one weapon and the other arm will never get a weapon because it's already a tentacle and many of your skills play on that. So you have all these tentacle skills that you can do whirlwind attacks with tentacles, you can extend your tentacle to grab someone, pull them towards you and then smack their face. You can even summon a friendly person called a worm that walks and you can equip him with armor and stuff like that and everything is kind of based on tentacles and grossness so here for example you can transform your tongue into a tentacle and lick people with it you can summon some different horrors you can summon or you have little worms under your feet that make you move quicker so everything is a little bit like horror-y tentacly stuff and this is actually a class now that i've finished the game with so if you would like to see how i played it uh, be sure to check out my guide on how to play this writhing one that i've also uploaded it runs quite long it's above an hour but the last part of the video is really just battle examples and you can see how i did the final boss as well as the vault so yeah in case you're interested check out that video then we have the race called the Drem and here you can see it's kind of generic skills and they are a lot of fun to use especially with the writhing one I found them very good because you have frenzy which allows you to use your skills multiple times however it does not work for inscriptions talents that take no turns to use or have fixed cooldowns however if you use insanity as a mechanism which is the uh, mechanism for the two new classes, uh, then your talents don't have a set cooldown. It really depends on how sane you are and that decreases or increases your cooldowns. So you can use this to cast your spells twice. Then we have spike skin here. Basically people that hit you, they start bleeding and they get a bit of damage and you gain resistance uh, for the people that are bleeding because you like the sight of the black blood. Then we've got Faceless here and basically you get some mental save and confusion immunity. And then we get to From Below a Devourers, which is a really amazing skill, which basically allows you to summon a monster somewhere. And it has a huge radius, a radius 10 taunt. So everything in that radius is pulled towards it and the creature forces everyone to attack this creature. The creature itself does not do any damage but it can really save you when you're in a pickle you just cast it somewhere and all the monsters will be focusing on this one really great skill tree then we have the cultists of entropy which are a very interesting yet very hard to play class i've only just started playing these now i finished the game with the writhing one and i haven't had much success yet and that's because all their talents are kind of intertwined with each other but the basic line of thinking with these is that you will be damaging others and while you're damaging them you get this thing called entropy or entropic backlash which does damage to you every turn so you are kind of doing damage to them but you're also sacrificing some of your own health for that and that keeps ticking on the more spells you cast the more damage you get however you can bend this to your will and then for example here with entropic gift you can take your entropy and put it on another creature so once you've built up enough damage over time on yourself, you can then transfer that to an enemy creature. Then also you have something cool like, for example, Fate Breaker, which makes you form a bond with someone else. And then if you get killed, that creature gets killed instead. So let's say you're on low health 
you cast this on another creature and then you cast a spell on yourself to kill yourself off, then you actually kind of get resurrected or you ignore the damage and you will kill someone else instead. So it's a, it seems to be a very cool class to play, but I haven't figured out a way yet to do it properly. I keep getting killed around like between level seven and level 10. Um, so I still need to kind of work on this, but it is at least a very, very interesting class and I'm looking forward to delving in more into this one in order to find out how to play it well. Then there are the new race of Croc and the Croc, they are anti-magic, so you will not be able to cast spells. So be careful which class you pick. And they've got these talents here. The first of which is Wrath of the Wilds, which unleashes the Wrath of the Wilds for five turns. And then you actively stun people whenever you hit them. The first target you hit has 100% and then you have 8% chance to stun them for three turns. So this is quite nice. Then we've got Drake Infused Blood, which raises your stun resistance by 20%, but then also raises your fire resistance by a certain percentage and deals fire damage on melee attacks. However, you can change this aspect. So you can, for example, have cold resistance and do cold damage or acid and do acid damage, for example. So that's how this works. Then we have Fuel Pain. So whenever you take a hit of 20% or more of your maximum life, one of your inscriptions is taken off cooldown. So let's say you get hit for a certain amount percentage of your life. Then, for example, my regeneration infusion here would be off cooldown. Of course, it doesn't reset your infusion saturation. So the more infusions you use, the more cooldowns they get. However, if you keep being uh, hit by people, then it can definitely be a lifesaver if then suddenly your heal or your regeneration would suddenly be off cooldown again. Then uh, lastly we have Warborn. You were created by the Ziggurat for one purpose only, to wage war on magic. For five turns all damage taken is reduced by 20%, so that's quite nice already. And when you activate this talent your Wrath of the Wild is put off cooldown. So this is the Wrath of the Wild. So first you can start stunning people, then you can activate this, and then this is immediately off cooldown again and you can continue stunning people. So that's quite nice. Also, when you learn this talent, you become so strong, you can dual wield any kind of one-handed weapons. So whether that's actually good or not, that really depends on your build, whether you want to de dual wield or not. But at least the first part of the skill is definitely good. You reduce all damage taken and you take this stun thing off cooldown. Now another thing I wanted to show here is another new tree in the game which is called Demented Scourge Drake. So you can unlock this however you should never do this when you are a croc because all the things that you unlock are spells and you're anti-magic so you won't be able to use them. But basically you unlock the Scourge Drake which is kind of a tentacly version of a dragon. So here first we have tentacle wings where you kind of flap your wings in front of you and then you do some damage and pull people towards you. You've got decaying grounds which is an AoE that deals blight damage and increases the cooldown for people that are in this AoE. And then we have Augment Despair. I kind of forgot what this one did. It increases the duration of detrimental effects by one turn and deals a certain amount of blight damage per detrimental effect that they have. And then we've got this one, Maggot Breath, where you just puke out maggots on other people and people will take damage, but they'll also get a crippling disease, which slows them and also deals more damage. So this is a new skill tree that you get when you purchase this expansion. Then there is a new thing in the game, which is the glass golem, which you can unlock for your alchemist. However, I have no clue how to do this. I've actually never ever played an alchemist, so I'm not sure how they work or what they do. So I now checked the skill tree of the golems and there's nothing about glass there. And I checked the skill tree of the alchemist and there's nothing about the golem there, uh, neither in these skills here. So I'm not entirely sure what to do. Probably you can unlock it by either using a certain piece of equipment or unlocking a certain achievement or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. So according to the Steam page, it is in the game, but how to get to it, I have no idea. This game will hit on Steam on the 16th of May for $6.99 or your regional equivalent. And there is a discount plan for both the base game, the other expansions, as well as this expansion when it launches. So do I think it's worth the money? Well, for me, it's hard to say anything about it because full disclosure, I got this key from the developer, so I did not have to spend my own money on doing this. So I don't really want to say whether it's worth it or not. What I can say that I was planning on buying it already before I got this key from the developer. So 
that's because I just really enjoy this game and I like the theme as well. I love reading Lovecraft, for example. So for me, this was a no brainer. However, if you've never played Tales of Magic Jal, I would suggest just getting the base game. The expansions are great, but they just add more stuff. And the base game is already so vast. There are so many classes, so many races that you can combine. And each class you can very often build in different ways as well. You won't be running out of content anytime soon. Like there's literally hundreds of hours of game time in there if you'd like. So if you are not tired of the base game yet, or if you've never played it, just pick that up. If you don't like Tales of Majijal, this expansion will not change your mind because it's, well, I don't want to say more of the same because there's a lot of cool original stuff here, but in a sense it's more of the same, like the base gameplay loop has not changed. So to wrap up, I very much enjoy the new content in this game. The new areas are cool, the new items are cool, the new classes are cool, the new races are awesome. So if you enjoy Tales of Majijal, this should be a no-brainer. So I hope you enjoyed this preview or review and see you next time.